Welcome to the Data Hall YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to talk about the difference in difference uh, research analysis technique. So let's look into what we are going to cover in this video. Uh, this would be a series of videos, so uh, stay tuned to the channel. So we're going to cover uh, the basic intuition, the basic the theory uh, behind uh, difference and difference analysis. Then we are going to look into the parallel trend assumption. It is the assumption that is required for the diff and diff to work. Uh, we are going to perform the difference and difference in Stata, both in the old version and the newer versions. So if you have Stata 16 and before, uh, there weren't any specific uh, built-in commands in them. Uh, so, 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 so you'd have to do that manually in those versions of Stata. We are going to look into that. Uh, and then we are going to look into the newer versions. So in Stata 17 and onwards, we do have their graphs and etc. Uh, all already built in uh, commands. We are also going to look into the triple difference. So let's start with uh, what difference in differences and what, when we are going to need it. So, so if, for example, you are going to study the impact of a policy or a treatment uh, on the treated. So it is a quasi experimental technique and uh, so, so, so in in social sciences we cannot perform. Uh, usually we cannot perform experiments. So they are cause experimental techniques that we can use. So if you want to study the impact of a policy on the uh, policy uh, 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 and its impact, then we can use different diffs. Similarly, uh, from the perspective of, of HR research. So if you want to study the impact of new HR policy on employees efficiency. Uh, the impact of intervention. So this technique is uh, mostly used in the medical science uh, discipline. So if you want to study the impact of an intervention, it can be a new drug or a new therapy or a new vaccine uh, or any program that is introduced uh, uh, in the hospital, uh, what its impact would be on the patients. Uh, and we can also do the, uh, the introduction of, uh, let's just say, a mandatory seat belt a law uh, that might reduce the car accident. So if if this is what we want to study. So how this technique works and why is it called uh, the difference in difference? So um, assume that we have a treated group. The treated group is the group that has received the treatment. So if it is a medicine, the, the uh, then the treated group will be patients that have received that medicine. Uh, if it is a vaccine, then treated group would be the the people who have received that vaccine, if it is a policy, then treated organizations or group would be the would be the or uh, would be the uh, entities that would have received uh, or would be ha would be affected by that policy. So uh, so let's just say uh, we, we want to look into the impact of this treatment, this new policy. Let's just say let's take an example. Let's say. A new policy was introduced uh, in an organization. Uh, it, a new training was given to the elderly employees uh, uh, in the organization, uh, and we wanted to study its impact on the production efficiency. Right. So, how many number of units? So, uh, before the this training, the uh, people, the employees uh, of that specific age group would produce one twenty. Um, products per day, let's just say, and after the treatment, they will produce 150. So the difference between the after, if, uh, the the after treatment production and the before treatment production is plus 30. So what we can conclude from here is that uh, uh, due to uh, uh, this training program, the uh, the production have increased by 30 units, but. Uh, this increase could be due to uh, some time varying factors. So for example, uh, during that time, the production had increased anyways, or there were, let's just say the temperatures had uh, got better, the environment in the factory had got better. So this incre increase might not be just the increase of the treatment, it can also be the fa uh, factors uh, that are changes changing with time. So. Uh, what we need to do is we need to isolate the impact of treatment. So we need to remove the impact of time variant factors. So we are just left with the uh, with the with the impact of the treatment. So what we do is we we introduce a control group. Uh, 
and we also do the before and after so this control group is the group that has not received uh, training um, so let's just say in our specific example uh, we have certain organizations which have introduced this training program and there are other organizations that have not introduced so the organizations that did introduce the training program uh, would be treated group and the organizations that didn't would become the control group so we also see that their production had also increased by 30 and if we calculate the difference between these two differences uh, it is zero uh, so what this this is saying is that there is no impact of the treatment because even the organizations that had provided uh, the training pro program uh, to its employee had increased its production by 30 products uh, units per day or per month and the uh, the organization that didn't introduce that training program had also increased the same amount uh, so there were some other factors time varying factors that were in increasing these uh, these production units uh, and if you take the difference between the treated group and the control group uh, differences, then we know that there is no actual impact of the treatment. So if it was either positive or negative, then we would have concluded that uh, that impact is because of the, uh, the treatment, the training program. Uh, so what we are seeing is that the production would have increased even without the treatment, right? So now this thing uh, is called the difference in difference. This is the uh, uh, this is also called difference in differences, diff in diff, uh, DD or DID. So whatever you would like to call that. It is also called the average treatment uh, effect on the treated, right? A T A E T. Okay, let's move forward. Uh, if we change the values, let's just say instead of one thirty the treatment group ha production had increased by 170 and then we would see that uh, the difference between the treated groups difference and the control group difference would be 20 and this means that uh, the production uh, is increased uh, by 20 uh, due to this treatment effect so what we are seeing is that this thing contains the treatment effect and other changes in the treatment group right so other changes that had happened to this treatment group and this 30 contains uh, all the other changes related to the, uh, the control group because it does not contain the treatment effect. So if we deduct uh, these two values, right? So if we take the difference of these two values, what we do is treatment effect, right? Then other changes minus other changes, uh, we get the effect of the treatment. So uh, graphically, let us say we have production on the y-axis and uh, we have before and after treatment on the x-axis and this is the time period uh, that had introduced uh, that uh, that treatment that training program let's just say so if we look uh, over here we have this treatment group and we can see that this treatment group uh, the production of this uh, this treatment group uh, the efficiency of employees in this organization that have delivered the training uh, is increasing uh, after the treatment, right? And the same is happening with the control group. And uh, now one thing that you need to understand is that this dotted line is the counterfactual. Uh, now this is the, uh, the thing that we cannot observe, right? The actual impact is this this red line, right? Uh, this solid red line. So what, what this dotted line represent is that the value of the treat, treatment group uh, if it had not been provided the treatment and this is the actual uh, actual production so remember this counterfactual is what we cannot observe but whatever the difference between this unobserved counterfactual and the actual value is uh, the effect of the treatment uh, so in this case we can clearly see if we if we ignore the dotted line we can clearly see that the treatment uh, group or the treatment do have a positive impact. If you provide the training, uh, the, the, the employee's efficiency would increase. Uh, in another case, if we see a, a graph like this, then we can see that uh, the production of the treatment group do have increased, but uh, the control group's production have also increased by similar amount. So 
We cannot conclude that this increase is because of the treatment because uh, the control group is also increasing at the same level, at the same pace. Uh, so this, this increase in the treatment group might be because of the other time varying. Okay, so how do we write, write it uh, in equation? So we have our dependent variable, we have our constant, then this is the uh, beta one treatment. And this treatment is the binary variable that would have a value of one if uh, that individual or that organization is in the treatment group and zero if it is in control group. So it is essentially a dummy variable. Then we have this time variable that would be value of one uh, uh, after the treatment and zero before the treatment. So if we take the interaction of these two, uh, these two uh, variables, that is the treatment and the time, we would get uh, an interaction term and this interaction term represents the, uh, the impact of the treatment. So this beta three shows the actual impact of the treatment and it should be significant for us to conclude that this treatment do have an impact. Uh, this is what we call the ATET, which stands for average treatment on the treated. So let me explain it further. So this is what equation we had in our previous uh, slide. And uh, let us let me put some values into it. So, so, so we have taken certain data and we have uh, performed this regression and we got these coefficient values. So what these coefficient value would, uh, would represent? The beta naught represents the value of the control group before the treatment. So in our example, it is the number of products that would be produced by the control group, right? So remember this beta naught takes the value of the omitted categories. So the omitted category is the control group and the before time period, right? Because treatment have a value of one and time after, after post treatment is a value of one. So that means that beta naught contains the uh, the, 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 the production of uh, the control group before the treatment. Uh, the treatment group would contain the, uh, uh, this beta naught plus, uh, beta one. So this would become the, that is 20 plus, uh, five. That would be the production of the treatment group before, uh, the treatment. Then we take the beta naught plus beta two. That would be the production of the, uh, the control group after the treatment and if we add all these up we get the uh, the production of the the estimated production of the treatment group after the treatment and remember the counterfactual would uh, would be beta naught plus b1 b2 uh, so it would just not contain the beta 3 which is the impact of the uh, the treatment because this dotted line remember this dotted line is the uh, production of the treatment group uh, if it had not received the treatment. If, if you have understood the difference and difference, uh, next you need to understand the parallel trend assumption or what we also call a common trend assumption. And this is the assumption that we need to, along with the other OLS uh, uh, regression assumption, tech, uh, regression assumptions that we need to fulfill this parallel trend assumption also. Now, what this says is that in the absence of the treatment, the slope of the treatment and the control group should remain same. Now, the question is, how do we know that in the absence of treatment, the slope of the treatment and the control group would remain same? Uh, we can test that using either graph or statistical test. So starting with the graph, uh, let's say this is, uh, this is our example and I have pasted over here the time period is T naught is the time at which the treatment had been uh, provided. T1 is the time period after the treatment and this is the after after treatment time period. Then we have T minus one before uh, treatment and before before treatment time period. Now, in the absence of the treatment, the slope of the treatment, what this parallel trend assumption says is that in the absence of treatment, this, this treatment group and the control group should have similar uh, slope. But remember, uh, this line is the, uh, the, the post treatment production of the treatment group. If the treatment had not given is a counterfactual and we cannot uh, observe it, right? Uh, what we can observe is the impact of after, uh, on the treatment group after the treatment, which again, the difference would be the fact. 
so what we so so we cannot observe the parallel trend assumption in its true nature what we need to do is then uh, we need to check the parallel trend assumption before the treatment had been provided so if they had a similar uh, slope if they were increasing at a similar pace uh, if their trend was constant, uh, then we can say that the parallel trend assumption is satisfied, right? Uh, if this is the case, then we can see that uh, before the treatment, they did not had same trend, constant trend. So we can say that parallel trend assumption is not satisfied. Statistically, what we can do is that, uh, you know, in, in, in this uh, slide I have showed you the time period before the treatment and before before treatment time period. So what we do is we ignore the after time period, uh, uh, the after treatment time period, and we 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 make a a dummy variable, a binary variable for two time periods. That is t minus one and t minus two, right? And now if we do an interaction and this beta three is insignificant, then that would mean that the treatment and the control groups have the same slope. So remember, this is an interaction dummy, and this is an interaction between the treatment and uh, the uh, the two time periods before the treatment. We would need two time periods before the treatment for this test to perform. So if this beta three is insignificant, then we can say that the treatment and the control group had the same slope before the treatment, and that satisfies the parallel trend assumption. Lastly, we have triple difference. And in our example, if we if we look at our example uh, related to the production and the training, so we know that the training was introduced uh, to a specific age group within that organization, let's say the elderly uh, employees, right? The employees that are, let's say, uh, uh, higher than the age of 40. So the, the training was only introduced to them. And the, so that was our treatment group, those organizations with hash, which has introduced that training to their elder employees. And then we had a control group, which was the organizations that did not had introduced the, that training program. But the difference can also be within the organization between these two groups, right? So to control that, what we, what we do is we take the, um, uh, the, the second control group, which is the, uh, the the employees less than the age of 40, so the younger employees. So we have two control groups, the organizations that did not have provided training, so that is one control group, and then we have the control group in both these organizations uh, uh, are the people who are less than age of 40. Uh, so what we do is we have two treatment, uh, so we have treatment one and treatment two, so that would just contain two groups, right? Uh, we just have single treatment, but we have two control groups. So this would be uh, equal to one if it is uh, elderly employee and uh, zero if it is a younger employee. And then we have this T2, which would be uh, the uh, the organizations that have provided the training and uh, zero if that organization have not provided the training. Then we have this post uh, time period. So this is the same as the time time period in our previous time variable in our previous uh, slides. We do the three-way interaction. If you have not understood the three-way interaction, uh, we have a video on that. I would give that link into the in the description. So uh, do watch that video and you would understand what three-way interaction is. What we do is uh, we interact at these three variables, right? So we have this in two-way interaction term, which is T1 and P. Then we have T2 and P, and then we have interaction of T1 and the T2. And lastly, we have this uh, three-way interaction term, which is the interaction of T1, T2, and P. So what we want is that uh, if we have a triple difference in difference, we would have we would want this B7, which is the uh, coefficient of uh, the three-way interaction term, uh, shows the actual impact of the treatment, and it should be significant uh, for us to conclude that the treatment uh, had an impact on the production of the employee. So I hope that was useful. Uh, do stay tuned to the channel.